Howdy all you cowboys, cowgirls, gunfighters, and gamblers. Before we jump into the details on this episode, a little disclaimer for YouTube. The information contained in this video is used for loading black powder cartridges for the family-oriented competitive sport of cowboy action shooting. The procedure outlined in this video, if done correctly, is perfectly safe and falls within the community guidelines of this platform. And a brief disclaimer for the viewers of this episode. Longtime regular viewers of this show know that I do a lot of shooting every month, and the majority, a good 99%, is done with real black powder. So as you can imagine, I have to load a lot of ammo for myself, as well as for Kook and Miss Harley. This is my load and my loading method for putting that ammo together. It is a combination of powder and bullet type that works for me, mixed in with a combination of formulas that have been handed down to me by my black powder mentors, just as I have handed it down to those I mentor. I made this episode to answer questions that I'm often asked about my formula and procedure for loading. This is not intended to be a guide to the perfect load or the perfect loading method. It's just what works for me. And some of the details are broken down into really basic steps, which experienced reloaders may find a little redundant. But keep in mind that there will be some folks watching this that are brand new to reloading, so I have to aim some of this information directly at them. Now with all of that said, let's learn how to load black powder 4440 or 44 Winchester centerfire cartridges. We'll start with the equipment I use, a simple Lee four hole turret press. And real quick, I want to go over how this Lee press was designed to be used. I don't use it this way because I find my method is a little faster for doing large quantities of ammo. But here's the standard method. So this is kind of the standard method for reloading on the Lee turret press. You would, at the first stage, deprime, then add in a fresh primer. And then the press automatically rotates to the next stage, which would be the case mouth expansion and the point where you would add your black powder. Always confirm that there's black powder in there. And then it would be at this point that you would seat the bullet. The final step, crimps. And there you have it. Fully loaded black powder 4440. Other equipment I use includes the RCBS universal hand priming tool, a set of lead dies, and side note on the lead dies, they come with very clear instructions on how to set them up on your press. I won't go over the step by step by step setup because again, the information is provided with the dies, and Lee does a very nice job of explaining it. A Lee powder measure kit, and several MTM universal loading trays. And finally, a case gauge checker. Now with all that equipment, we're ready for step one. I run all of my brass, even new brass, through the resizing die of my Lee four hole turret press. This step forms the brass into the proper shape for chambering into a firearm and also removes the fired primer from a used shell. So again, step one, deprime and resize the brass cartridges. This step is also where I would check for any split cases and dispose of them. Deprimed and resized shells are then bagged in quantities of 100 along with a box of primers. I use and prefer Federal large pistol primers for my 4440 loads. It doesn't matter if they're match grade or magnum or regular primers. I buy whatever is available on the shelf at the best case price. Step two, prime the shell. After we've deprimed and bagged our 100 rounds, they get set aside until there are 500 or five bags of a particular caliber. Once I have 500 rounds, I get comfortable, put on my favorite movie or binge watch part of a series and hand prime each shell. I prefer the RCBS hand primer to others on the market, and I've used them all. They all have their good points and bad, 
but the RCBS is rugged and for me, it's the most comfortable hand primer on the market. A Lee hand primer may serve you just as well. Once all 500 rounds are primed, they're placed in the reloading room until step three. It's time to put powder in the shells. For this step, I lay out 10 MTM universal loading trays to hold our 500 primed cartridges. I use a Lee dipper set for all of my black powder loads. So at this stage, I use the 2.2 cc scoop to load approximately 32 grains of 2F black powder into each of the 4440 shells. This load fills the case with enough room for the bullet to slightly compress the powder. And that is what you want when working with real black powder. As a side note here, I use any brand of black powder for cowboy action shooting. I just buy whatever brand has the best case price. I've used Diamondback, which I believe used to be Elephant, which I've used Elephant as well before they went out of business. I've used Kick, which I believe is also out of business. Of course, there's GoX and Swiss, and you might recall I ordered a case of black powder branded under the Graffinson name. And this is one of the steps that can be sped up if you have two people, because one person can scoop the powder while the other moves the funnel. Obviously one person can do it just fine, but it may be a little slower. Then at this stage, I check. And then double check to make sure that all 500 shells have powder in them. Once that's confirmed, we can move on to step four. This step consists of three parts, expanding the case mouth, putting the bullet on and seating it, then crimping the shell around the bullet. And the bullet I like for black powder cowboy action shooting is from Desperado Cowboy Bullets. For my 4440 load, I use their 200 grain lead bullet sized to 428. I find their bullets to be very accurate. They are, after all, the bullet with the ding cast in. And I find cleanup, even after 100 rounds, to be really easy with the lube they use. I use a Lee factory crimp die set per Lee's included instructions. That puts a firm grip into the crimp groove of the Desperado bullet. I have no performance issues using this method. The final step, step five, before boxing the ammo, is to use a case gauge checker to ensure that your newly loaded ammo is within specs. This will allow it to chamber correctly in both rifle and revolvers. And there you have it. Loading black powder really breaks down to a pretty simple process. And if you like this look at my loading procedure, then please be sure to hit that like button. Depending on the success of this episode, I plan to bring you the same breakdown on my other black powder loads, 38 Special, 3220, etc. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on those episodes or any of my other time traveling adventures. Also, I welcome any comments on this episode in the comment section below this video. Financial contributions to this channel at www.buymeacoffee.com slash Jedi TV are also welcome. And I will provide a link to that site in the description box of this episode for you to use if you're so inclined. With all that said, I'm Jed, this is Jedi TV, and I'll see you in some other place in some other time. Howdy all you cowboys, cowgirls, gunfighters, and gamblers. <clears throat> For this step, I lay out 10 Lee priming trays. No, MTM. For this step, I lay out 10 MTM. And there you have it. And there you have it.